Well, hello there. How are you guys doing? Happy New Year. My name is Rob of Rule of Two Review. Welcome back to the channel. Today is Monday, January 3rd of 2022. Holy freaking cow. It's a brand new year, you guys. What an insane feeling to finally have 2021 behind us. Never thought it was even going to happen, given how 2020 went the year before. But nonetheless, here we are. And what I wanted to do in today's video is celebrate the fact that exactly one year ago today on January 3rd of 2021, I made a video at that time discussing what I expected from Metroid, the franchise, and specifically Metroid Prime 4 in the year of 2021. At that time, exactly one year ago on January 3rd, I made two big claims. One, that we would see and hear from the Metroid franchise before 2021 ended, and the second one, more specifically, that we would see and hear from Metroid Prime 4 as a game. A teaser, a trailer, a release date, a title, maybe even lucky enough to have the game itself actually release in 2021. Although I didn't really expect that, I definitely thought there was a fantastic chance that we were going to finally see an update and maybe even see some gameplay from Metroid Prime 4 in the year of 2021. Now, of course, that did not happen. Metroid Prime 4 was a complete no-show in the year of 2021, which is utterly tragic and breaks my heart. However, we got what is arguably even better news, where the Metroid franchise did get acknowledged in 2021, and in fact, they not only announced a brand new game, they also released that brand new game, of course, we're talking about Metroid Dread. And so all in all, 2021 was definitely a success for the Metroid franchise in that respect. And I do think that ultimately it was more important and impactful for a new Metroid game, not a remaster or a re-release or anything like that, but for a new game to get announced and also release and be fantastically good, even more so than just getting an update trailer for Metroid Prime 4. And so, like I said, since exactly one year ago today, I made a discussion about Prime 4 in the Metroid series. What I wanted to do today, January 3rd, 2022, is make a bit of an update about the state of Metroid Prime 4 specifically, and also a little bit about Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. Now, as many of you know, and as I said in my last video, I am taking a break from YouTube for a small period of time after today's video. However, as silly as it may sound, I still do want to remind you guys that I do care about the channel, and I am trying to grow the channel. I am less than 15 subscribers away from crossing 18,000 subscribers, and even though it's an awkward time to remind you guys of my subscriber goal, being that I'm about to go on break for a period of time, again, I still care about the channel, I still care about the growth, and I would love to hit that 18,000 subscriber goal before my break officially begins. So, as you watch this video, if you seem to like what I'm doing and what you hear, know that eventually I will be coming back after a short beginning of the year break, and so I hope you consider subscribing to the channel. So, Metroid Prime 4. Where do we find the state of that game coming into the beginning of 2022? It's been a long road, and I've made several update videos about Metroid Prime 4's development ever since the delay in 2019. I discussed it at that time. I discussed it in January of 2020. I discussed it in January of 2021. Here I am, January 22, doing the same thing because we continue to wait for updates and a release date and a trailer, a teaser, anything, even just a glimpse into what Samus herself is going to look like, we continue to wait. And now I wanted to believe that at the Game Awards, which was only just a couple of uh, weeks ago, I wanted to believe that we were going to see and hear an update from that game, specifically because Met Nintendo brought Metroid back into the forefront by making and releasing a brand new game. And because they've had a presence at the Game Awards in the past, I was like, maybe they're going to give us an update about Metroid Prime 4 at this show. I thought that there was a great chance. And as we know, Nintendo didn't show anything. Almost no one showed anything significant at that show. And so coming into 2022, it's been, you know, almost five years since Metroid Prime 4 was even announced in 2017. And it's been almost three years since the delay was announced in 2019 and they restarted development and they gave the studio back to Retro Studios, or they gave the game back to Retro Studios, I should say. And we're still waiting. And so going into this year, can we expect to see anything from this game 
in 2022. And now I know we get tired of hearing people like myself say this, but it's all we can do. And my answer is yes, I do think there's a chance, if not a great chance, that we see the game this year. Of course, it's ironic and silly because exactly one year ago I told you the same thing about 2021, and I was wrong. And so that sucks, I was wrong, but at this point the only thing any of us can do is now move our expectations back one year. Because Nintendo eliminated 2021 as a possibility. It's 22 now, we can't expect the game in 21, it's time to look ahead to this year. And I feel like every day we're at the cusp of finally seeing and hearing an update from Nintendo about Metroid Prime 4. At this point, regardless of its initial announcement at E3 in 2017, it's been three years since they restarted development in 2019 and gave it back to Retro Studios. Three years, you guys, is a long time. No matter how much time and effort they're putting into this game, it is long enough that I guarantee you there is a close to completed vision of what the game will look like, how it will run, how it will play, what the ideas and concepts are, the story, the look of Samus, the upgrades, the environments, the locations, the final boss. I mean, these things, I guarantee you after three years, have some level of solidity to them, and I guarantee you that there is something significant they could show. Even if it was only 30 seconds, they could show us what this game conceptually will look like. And so I absolutely believe that whether it's in a regular Nintendo Direct this year, like maybe even in January this month, or sometime before or after E3, or very likely even at E3, that they will finally pull the veil off of Metroid Prime 4 and give us a look at that game so we can see it visually, we can get an idea of the gameplay, and like I've already said here, just see what Samus is going to look like in this new game. That's an important deal, you guys. Go back to when Metroid Dread was revealed at E3 in 2021, and when we first saw that shot of Samus, we're like, oh my god, we're seeing Samus again. And one of the biggest takeaways from that trailer, beyond just the fact that the game was announced, was also, look at Samus. Look at this new version of the suit that she's wearing. Why does it look this way? What does it all mean? And, you know, we eventually learned what it meant. But at the time, when that trailer and that announcement was just hours old, even days old, we were, like, fascinated over what she looked like and what her suit looked like. And then we had time to kind of breathe and take a step back and start to think about, okay, if this game takes place after Metroid Fusion, and we know what she went through in Metroid Fusion and what happened to her suit in Metroid Fusion, maybe it means her suit looks this way for XYZ reasons. And of course, most of us who know Metroid and Samus and the story were pretty dead on on what we thought was happening with her suit, but we didn't know it until we had a chance to analyze what she looked like and thought about the story. And so to me, when it comes to the state of the Metroid franchise, which is obviously going through a great resurgence, and the state of Metroid Prime 4 in 2022, I think things are looking pretty good, you guys. I'm very optimistic we're going to see the game this year. And I know, I was optimistic a year ago for 2021, and I know that I was wrong, but so sue me. I mean, we can only we can only guess about Metroid Prime 4, right? That's all we can do. And so my guess is that, you know, yeah, I think we're very likely going to see it this year. Maybe I'll be wrong again, and that's okay. I'll tell you when I think that I'm wrong again. But I think we're going to see it this year, and I think that... The last element it's worth touching on when it comes to Metroid Prime 4 this year is, and I know many of you guys are sick of hearing me say this too, but I'm going to continue to double down on this, is the fact that I think Nintendo is working on new hardware. And I don't mean Switch OLED or Switch Lite hardware that doesn't actually upgrade the power and capabilities. I mean something significant. It's been almost two years you guys have been hearing me say this, and I still believe it, okay? Not that there's any leaks, I'm just telling you my own personal prediction as a fan, okay? Is that Nintendo was working on something that I initially thought was more than likely releasing this year, but I now think will release next year, okay? I'm not putting my money on 2024, I'm putting my money on 2023, or slightly on this year, 22. I think Nintendo will eventually announce either an upgraded Switch or a Switch 2 that is so powerful that it's closer in power to PS5 and Series X, that it will play games the current Switch cannot, all iterations of the current Switch can't, and I think that Metroid Prime 4 will be one of those games that is going to release either exclusively on that new hardware or cross-generationally on the 2017 Switch hardware 
and the new Switch hardware that I'm thinking will probably release in 2023. And if that's the case, then there's a great chance that when and how Nintendo chooses to show us Metroid Prime 4, it may also correlate to their announcement or confirmation of this new hardware. And now Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 finds itself in a slightly different scenario because we obviously know more about that game. We've seen that game. We've had two very short and fairly vague, but also very exciting teasers for Breath of the Wild 2. So we understand how it's a direct kind of sequel to that game. We've seen what Link and Zelda look like in that game, some cutscene moments, what seems to be Ganon being resurrected, all sorts of flashes of crazy stuff. We know Link has something happening to his right arm that seems to be giving him some new powers. We understand that Hyrule seems to have been changed and there are floating islands and chunks of the of, of Hyrule floating in the sky that Link will be able to travel to. He's gonna be able to jump and dive off of cliffs and do the thing like Skyward Sword. I mean, we got something when it comes to Breath of the Wild 2, as well as we have a target release year, which is this year in 2022. So that makes everything about Zelda a little bit more exciting and tangible compared to Metroid Prime 4. Now, of course, Breath of the Wild 2 has a couple of big questions around it still, right? I think that the main thing we all want to know is, will the game stick to 2022? Or will it suffer the same fate as many Zelda games and get delayed and delayed and delayed and maybe it slips into 2023? I mean, that's certainly possible, but I want to have faith and I want to believe that Nintendo can hit this target and actually release Breath of the Wild 2 this year in 2022. Probably, you know, almost likely in November is their big November title to combat whatever might be happening from the competition. And so I want to believe it's going to hit this year. And then, of course, we wonder what's the title of the game going to be? What can they actually tell or show us about the gameplay, the story? What does it mean that Link has something happening to his right arm? What does it mean that there's these floating island sections? What does it mean that Hyrule Castle seems to be lifting out of the ground and doing whatever is happening there? Are you going to be able to traverse underneath Hyrule Castle in caverns below the ground like we saw in that first teaser? These are all the questions that we want to know. And if you go back to 2016, when Nintendo gave us a huge blowout of the first Breath of the Wild at E3 that year, before we knew it was a Switch title, we would all like to see something similar. We'd love to see Nintendo take two or three days and just dedicate to blowing the doors open on Breath of the Wild 2. I don't think they'll do it to that degree. I think that was a one-time special situation, but I do think they could give us something really significant tons of new gameplay, tons of hints at the world and the story, and truly let us know why we should be excited about this game, just beyond the fact that it's a new Zelda game. It's a very exciting time. Having a new Metroid game and a new Zelda game waiting in the wings is exactly what we want from our favorite company, Nintendo. Beyond the other things we know that they're doing in 22, that's all very exciting. I think that, um, I think that waiting to see what happens with Breath of the Wild 2 and, of course, Metroid Prime 4... This is the dream, baby. Zelda and Metroid, my two personal favorite franchises of all time, with new games on the horizon. Very cool. Metroid Prime 4 is still the bigger mystery. Will we see and hear from that game in 2022? I believe so. Will that game be releasing on a next-gen hardware, either exclusively or cross-gen? I do believe so. I think it's meant to be a showcase and a strong release uh, launch title for that new hardware, if in fact my guess is correct. And so I think this could be the year, man. 2022 could be the year that we see more from Zelda, we play a new Zelda, and hopefully we see what Metroid Prime 4 is going to look like. And so with that being said, I think I'm going to call that a wrap on this video. And I get to finally start my temporary, you know, break from YouTube and kind of see what that whole situation looks like. Um, like I said, an exciting time. It's always great to begin a new year. A new year is just what I personally needed for myself, I can tell you guys. Uh, hopefully, again, you had a great celebration for New Year's. Hopefully, you were safe. Hopefully, you're looking forward to 2022, both in terms of gaming and Nintendo and Metroid and Zelda stuff, as well as in your personal lives. I hope everything is going just swimmingly for all of you. And so with that, I'm going to sign off for now. It'll be a while, but I will be back in the future. Again, you know, subscribe, even though I'm going on break, if this is your first video you found for me. And uh, let's look forward to Metroid and Zelda stuff sometime in 2022. So with that, I thank you all kindly. I appreciate you tuning in. And with that, I will see you again sometime in the future on another video. Bye-bye.